with Steve Watkins and Dick Baloney, who have put out the book, to The 50 Greatest Games in Bengals History, Bengals Classic. Welcome, guys, and how did you come to this decision? How tough was it to get 50? Well, it was really tough. I mean, we started out with a list uh, between Dick and I of probably about 100 games that we just went through the Bengals history and looked at um, games that, that jumped out in one fashion or another. Um, and then we whittled it down from there. We had to decide what made a game great for one thing. And we came down to three different criteria, really. It was either just a fantastic game, whether it was a great finish or a comeback or back and forth type of game. Some games just had to do with how significant it was for the Bengals. Might be a playoff win or a game that clinched a division. And then some were uh, fantastic individual performances. Corey Dillon breaking the rushing record or Kenny Anderson's consecutive passing completion streak, that kind of thing. And then we just talked about it, whittled it down, had a few fights, maybe pretty <laughs> pretty minor, but you know, had some lively discussions to get it down to 50. That was my next question, Dick, is that you know, no, nothing creates arguments more than sports. You two guys are trying to decide and you gotta order these things. Things. What was the liveliest debate? Well, there were some. There were when we first got the assignment or agreed to do the book. We each had in our mind some games, excuse me, that we knew would be that we thought should be on there, and a couple that I went ahead and wrote. And then after we got together and did the list, Steve thought, no, they should not be on there. And they actually came in at fifty, at forty-nine and fifty, to kind of you know. Um, to appease you a little bit. Yeah, appease, yeah. Find a I'll throw you 49 and 50. Yeah, middle ground. One is a win over Minnesota in 1973 when they shut out the Vikings. And then the game in 79 when they beat the Steelers 34 to 10. Uh, the Steelers were in the middle of their Super Bowl run and the Bengals were in 0 uh, 8 at the time, I believe. But the Bengals beat them. So, so the, the Super Bowl teams, I imagine those runs leading up to and just after it dominate the 50. Yeah, yeah, that's a lot of it. Um, definitely all the playoff wins. Unfortunately, there aren't as many as any of us yeah. would like, but uh, the playoff wins, and you're right, the games leading up to those. One thing that was really surprising to me once I dug into it is 2009 had, I think, four games in there and probably one or two others. I had forgotten at the start of the season, almost every game came down to the final play or the mm. final 30 seconds, and the Bengals won most of those, so there were really some fantastic finishes there, and that led up to a, a playoff uh, appearance that season um, but yeah a lot of those much better seasons really dominate the book which is great for fans that can look back at this and say boy the Bengals really were really good <laughs> at some points in time. Dick you mentioned you had an idea going in yeah. obviously you, you had a handful not right. 50 but were there games as you did the research that come out jumped out of you and said wow I didn't remember how great that game was. Well, there are some. There's one that kind of one of my favorites was the last game of the 75 season. Um, the Bengals were 11-2 and two going in. Uh, they needed to win to get the wild card, the only wild card they gave out at the time. The Steelers had already clinched the, clinched the division. They were fortunately playing San Diego at home uh, the weekend before Christmas. San Diego was not very good. Um, but the Bengals uh, led that game 20 to nothing before San Diego ever ran an offensive play. And the rest of it was just kind of running out the clock. Uh, the Bengals got the kickoff, went down and scored. Chargers fumbled the kickoff. Bengals recovered, went in and scored. And same thing happened on the next kickoff. Uh, the Bengals did miss the extra point after the third touchdown. Uh, wow. That was one. Um, and I, you know, when I went back and looked at all the games, I kind of said, oh, yeah, I remember that one, listening to it as a kid, the significance of it, getting into the playoffs. So that, that's one that st stood out for me. Mentioned the Chargers, obviously you got to think of the Freezer Bowl. Were there things you found out about the Freezer Bowl that you didn't already know? There were some things, um, in, it didn't actually make the cut of the book, but um, I went back and compared temperatures of that day to some other days in Cincinnati history, and actually it was not the coldest day in Cincinnati history. As some people like to believe it was, it was fairly cold. If you were there, it was. Yeah, if, if you were there, <laughs> yeah. If you were one of the you know, 500,000 people and now, now claims to have been there. Um, but no, it was, um, kind of, I went back and actually you can watch that game on, on YouTube, on the internet, so I kind of did, and one of the things that st stood out for me was just how white and gray everything was. NBC opened with the overhead shot, um, and you could see the, obviously the green AstroTurf and the Chargers and Bengals uniform stood out, but everything else around there was just white and gray, and it was really kind of stark and uh, really stood out. You know, it, as you watch the game, just a reminder of really how desolate and how cold that day was. As you look back on 50 greatest games and some of the highlight years as they celebrated their golden anniversary, what kind of perspective does that give you as to what's happened the last couple of years? 
Yeah, well, I, I thought it was interesting. For one thing, it's a really good reminder, as I mentioned a little bit before, that the Bengals had some really great teams uh, in a lot of seasons. Back in the 70s, they did, and then, of course, in the Super Bowl seasons in the 80s, and even into the very early 90s, and then things went downhill. But it really gives you the perspective that this has been a really great franchise. And uh, then you look at the more recent seasons, as disappointing as the postseasons have been, they've had some very good uh, teams during the seasons uh, during the regular seasons and and you know have, have put together a really good string uh, until a couple of years ago playoff appearances so it does show you that this team can be very good not just kind of competitive but but a really good team and it does give you hope I think for uh, the near future and then now we have the coaching change another reason to, to maybe pin your hopes on on something in the future dick without asking you a specific number how many games from the Marvin Lewis era made it uh, actually, somebody asked me this a while back. I think I counted up 18. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, so. That's, in 16 years, that's a pretty yeah, good batting pretty good. average. I mean, yeah. Um, and we, I, I actually had somebody, you know, message me on Facebook once saying, you know, he was not a Marvin Lewis fan, so he said, yeah, I hope there aren't any Marvin Lewis, Lewis games in there. I said, well, you know, he is the winningest coach in franchise history, and he's been there, you know, this, um, 16 years, I guess, was. So, you know, you have to have something. And um, So, yeah, um, I mean, seven playoff seasons. Um, no and playoff wins, but yeah, there were a lot. And they're longer than, much longer than any other Bengals coach in history. Right. So it does stand to reason to an extent, although it is a little bit surprising there were so many. What is the most recent game in there? The uh, uh, playoff loss to Pittsburgh after the 2015 season, so about three years ago. Um, it's one of four losses that we do have in the game, two Super Bowls and both playoff losses to Pittsburgh uh, made, made the cut. Um, but that would be the most recent one. There was one from a couple from 2017 that we kind of considered, but at the end we decided just to keep, keep the list as it was. Got to ask you one last thing. We you know, go 50 to up to one if you read the book in order chronologically. How did you get to number one and why is it one? Well, number one, uh, as probably most people would guess, is the Freezer Bowl. And uh, it, that really was very little discussion involved in that, just because it was such a memorable game, such a great uh, outcome for the Bengals, and put them into their first Super Bowl in history. So the, the significance of the game for the Bengals and just being probably by far the most memorable game in this franchise's history made that number one kind of almost a no-brainer for us. And because they lost the second Super Bowl. <laughs> That's right. Which was a great game. <laughs> Where is that on the list? The, the Super Bowls are number two and I think number four. 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 And, um, you know, the, the one where Joe Montana led the big comeback is number two. Some people say, why is a loss up that high? But at the time, I think it was probably considered the greatest uh, Super Bowl game in history at that point in time. Right. And when you have such a great game on such a big stage, it had to be up there near the top. Well, the book is out by Kent State Publishing. It's available on Amazon. We thank you guys for coming in and uh, hope sure. for the, something big <laughs> to make the list in the near future. Absolutely. Thanks for having us. Right. Thank you.